Night sweats in the bitter cold. That one's actually not so metaphorical. It was because I live in San Francisco and it's really hot during the day and really cold at night. So the very first line of the song, I'm sober, hung over, was really important to me to set the scene. Basically, we all know what it's like after a long night of drinking, when you wake up, your head pounding, you're sweating, you may not know where you are, you're exhausted. And what I found was I was feeling that on a regular Tuesday morning when I hadn't drank a drop um, because of my new surroundings and how much I was adjusting. As I tighten my grip on the sinking ship was all about how I wasn't really adjusting to this big change that occurred in my life. I was sort of grabbing onto the past, thinking I could go home, um, thinking that I could kind of avoid the problem, when in reality, it wasn't the surroundings or my life that was challenging me, it, it was myself. And then the water engulfs my head as a metaphor for because I was hanging on to this thing that no longer existed, instead of sort of dealing with the problems and realities in front of me, I sort of was drowning myself. One of the lines in the pre-chorus then is, so I fill my syringe with memories and cut it with hyperbole. Everyone knows that when you think about the past or nostalgia, you have sort of these great memories of it because you sort of cut out the boring or the bad parts. And so what I found was I was doing just that. I was using sort of this nostalgia to put me in a different place, almost as like a drug and I was cutting it with hyperbole, making these memories sound way better than they were to make it seem like this, this bad time that I was in right now was much worse than it was and the, the experiences I had had before it were much better than they were. And because of that, much like any drug, you know, it felt really good when you were kind of sitting there maybe listening to old songs about old friends or whatever the case was, but when you come down from that high, you feel much worse than when you started and you wasted a lot of time not moving forward. So the chorus, take me underneath right now, but please don't make me stay. That was sort of my cry for help right before taking the drug or sort of leaning back and going back in time into my memories. Take me underneath, get me out of this horrible situation, get me out of my head, and please, when I come back, don't make me stay there. Like I'd rather be anywhere else. So in the second verse, when I say, drifting off into the dark, another sleepless dream, what I had found was when I was living in my new place, even when I was just walking to get groceries or go get Starbucks, I was on my walks getting so sort of lost in this hopelessness or these daydreams that I would sort of almost black out. And the next thing I knew I'd be at the grocery store because I would be so sort of engulfed in this sleepless dream, like a daydream. Yeah, I used to own the spotlight, but Hollywood has found another type. That one sort of speaks of betrayal, like you used to own the spotlight, but Hollywood has kind of kicked you to the side. What I had found was when I moved away into my new situation, I had sort of felt betrayed by friends. They hadn't really done anything wrong, but because I was feeling so lonely, so busy, so anxious, there was no one there to really comfort me or make me feel better, and it almost led to a sense of, of betrayal, and that sort of drives that alienated feeling that I had. One of the messages I try to convey through First and Flight is taking a leap of faith, doing the thing that scares you and getting out of your comfort zone. But that's not always fun. There's usually negative consequences before there are positive. That's why so many people have such a hard time doing it. And syringe was sort of representing for me the three to six month period of those negative consequences that came with it. However, if I hadn't gone through that period, I would have never met this band, I would have never moved to California, and my life would be nowhere near what it's like right now. So it's absolutely worth it, and that's kind of the message I want to convey. And also, just to be sure, my mental health is totally fine. I don't want anyone to worry about me. I am very stable and all good. All right, guys, make sure you hit that subscribe button below for new content every single Friday. Also, hit the link below to sign up for our email list to get secret, unreleased content. We'll see you guys here next week.